that's no joke. And uh, uh, last week we talked about um, the title was Beauty in the Sun. But what we learned in our last meeting was the seriousness of sin. And we learned how sin separates us from God. And I hope that you remember, and if you weren't here last week, go back and read Genesis chapter 4. Um, and verse 7, it says, uh, it says, if you do what is right, and he was talking to Cain, God was talking to Cain, and he said, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you refuse to do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires you, but you must master it. Now, sin came in with Satan. Satan, Adam, had the dominion of the earth. He had the keys of the kingdom, so to speak. He could do with the earth anything he wanted. God said, this is yours. I created this for you. Here's the keys to it. And Satan gave, uh, Adam gave it over to Satan. Okay, so that's why we're in the shape we're in. And, uh, but so now God had instituted the um, sacrifices, and that's what we went over last week. It was the sacrifices and how, how Abel brought his sacrifice of the best of his flock, and God accepted that. And how Cain brought the best that he grew. He brought fruits and vegetables, and he brought a salad, and God did not accept that. Okay, so that's very key for us to understand why God didn't accept that and because and, it does impact our lives. But if you go back and read Genesis chapter 4, you're going to see how loving God is. He doesn't get mad. He doesn't beat Cain over the head because he brought a salad. He just simply says, Cain, if you do right, you'll be accepted. And he says, if you refuse to do what's right, he said, sin is crouching at your door. He didn't say, I'm ready with a sledgehammer, you know, to beat you over the head, a frying pan. He didn't say that. He, he said, I, I'm not after you. He said, but sin is after you, and it's crouching at your door, and it desires you, but you must master it. You must master it. Okay? So we can take that for every one of us. Sin is crouching at every one of our doors, but we have to master it. All right? So how do we do that? Well, we first of all, we, we have to see that sin always, always, always brings death. It brings death in every way. It brings death to you. It brings death to someone you know. It brings death to, you know, somebody. Sin brings death. And as Carol pointed to me uh, after the meeting last week, as she drove home, she said she was thinking about the message and meditating on on what we had learned, and she pointed out that Jesus said that he didn't come to do away with the law, but he came to fulfill it, okay? And the law meaning the Ten Commandments and all the other all the other laws that you may read in the Old Testament. But see, Jesus didn't say, okay, I've done away with those. You know, they're over. No, he said, I came to fulfill them. And, um, and so what he's talking about is the law of God where, where God himself instituted that first animal sacrifice. And, and why did he do that? He says sin is so bad that that's the only way that sin can be reckoned with is, is by a blood covering. And so he covered Adam and Eve. He covered their loss. And I believe... That they were not naked as we think of naked. I think that they were clothed in glory. They were clothed in a robe of righteousness. They, they exuded light. And as I've said before, there is some scientific evidence that, that our genes contain um, light. They have seen like this little light. And I believe that our bodies were clothed in light. And when, they, when that light was gone, then they were naked. The, the, the glory of God was gone. And to cover that loss of glory, then that animal had to be killed and that, that, that blood was what covered their sins. So, so our sin required the death of an innocent animal. Now, you know, I'm right, that, uh, that today, if, if, if I went out on the street and preached this message out on the street, people would be in an uproar, okay? Um, somebody told me last night that um, they saw somebody would that my family knows, posted a picture on Facebook of an animal inside of a woman's womb. Okay? That's the point we have elevated animals. Yes. All right? Now, 
I got my husband a puppy for Christmas. Do I love that puppy? Yes. Okay, but I don't love that puppy to to a point of like I would you know uh, leave everything to my to my puppy and not and leave my kids out. You know what I'm saying? But there's people that do that. Okay, and what I'm saying is today if you talk about a blood covering, uh, and of course we're talking about the blood of Jesus, but but people will not listen to anything that has to do with blood. I had a little boy in here several years ago for children's church, and the first story that I, that well, the, the story that I happened to be telling that day was about Abraham and Isaac. And that little boy was incensed when I talked about, you know, the blood covering and, 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 and his father was going to, you know, God was calling his father to sacrifice him. He, I couldn't even get to the point of the story because he was so undone and incensed by it. Well, that's, the, that's, that's how we are today. You know, and yet this is how, this is God's way. He says this is how bad sin is. And uh, and so when you talk about, you know, an animal sacrifice, uh, that's just going to send people, uh, you know, through the roof and send them out in la-la land. Uh, but how much worse is our sin that causes the death, that caused the death of those animals, that caused the death of Jesus Christ? See, when I look at that. And uh, but we so we place very little value on human life today. And come on, we murder on a daily basis. Okay, I mean it's the truth. And that's another message, though. But Jesus went through this horrible suffering so that we could be healed. And again, the animals were not they were not beat, they were not uh, scourged, they were not uh, you know run through the ringer, they were not anything. They were perfect when they died. And, uh, and But yet Jesus bore those stripes on his back. He was beaten. He was beaten for one reason. He suffered for one reason, and that was for our healing. Okay. The cross, the shedding of the blood was for our sins. But the beating that he took prior to the cross was for one reason, and that was so we could be healed. And so he paid the price for sin. And... Uh, and so, and you can read that in John 15, 13. But guess what? If you don't accept his payment for your sins, then you're going to have to die for your own sins. That's the fact. So you got to decide, am I going to accept his payment for my sins, or am I going to accept my own responsibility for my own sins, and I'm going to die for my own sins? Because you will die, and you will pay for your sins one way or the other. If you don't let God, if you don't let Jesus do it. So you will suffer God's judgment in yourself for your own sin because sin requires something to die. Now, I for one don't want to suffer for my own sins. Okay? I do have a brain in there. You may think I don't, but I do have a brain in there. And my brain says, I don't like pain. <laughs> okay? And I don't want to suffer. Okay, so when you get that through your brain and you understand the whole scheme of things, then, Lord, I give it to you, and uh, I'll let you pay the price, and I'll let you deal with this because I do not want to suffer. So this is huge for you to understand this because how many of you grew up in a home where they say, well, if you're a good person, you'll go to heaven? Okay, that's how I grew up. If you're a good person, you'll go to heaven. That's not true. The Bible doesn't say that Cain was a bad person. He just brought salad. Hey. hey. <laughs> so you know what? Cain, it doesn't say anything about Cain being a bad person. He just didn't bring the right sacrifice. So so this comes, and, and the reason we get this attitude is if you're a good person, you go to heaven. The reason we get that is because of keeping the Ten Commandments. You know, so basically, uh, you know, we grow up thinking, and then we grow up in this world of, you know, do good, get good, do bad, good, get, get bad. And, and basically, that's what the Ten Commandments were uh, loosely based on. And, but there was just one problem. And the problem was that nobody could keep them. And then when Jesus came, he expanded on them, and he made them even harder to keep. Okay? And nobody could keep the commandments. And so, uh, so God had to have this, this blood sacrifice because the, that's the only thing that, that would satisfy this, uh, this sin problem. And so what God was doing, he was showing them 
their need for him. He was showing them through the Ten Commandments that, yes, I am holy, but you can't keep, you can't live up to my standards in this fallen state that you're in. And he knew that he couldn't keep the Ten Commandments. And so what did he do? He had, he had Moses set up the temple and set up all the sacrifices. And um, although the sacrifices had already been instituted with Adam and Eve. And, uh, and then we saw that through Cain and Abel. But all of that was to point to the Savior that was eventually going to come and take away the sins of the world. So I hope that you see the significance of the story of Cain and Abel and what it's showing us. And if you don't understand who you are in Christ and what he did for you by offering himself up as a punishment for your sins... And that he now literally lives in you, and he lives in you to overcome through you, and to shine his beauty on you, then you're not going to be able to understand any of the truths in the Bible, and you're going to struggle. Okay? So go back and read Genesis chapter 4, and get it in your head. Ask God to give you a revelation. Ask him to open your eyes to what this really means. And, and, uh, and... You know, if we continue to, to pray and beg God and, and, oh, bless me, heal me, you know, all this stuff that we ask him for, uh, the thing is, see, we don't want to keep praying the same thing over and over every day. Lord, heal me. Every day, heal me, Lord. Heal me, Lord. Heal me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Bless. No, he said it's already done. It's already finished. So we need to ask one time, and then we need to come, but thank you for healing me. Thank you for providing me. Thank you that it's already done. Okay? And, um, and, and if you don't have an understanding of what he did at the cross and you don't understand that it's already finished, that the bill's already been paid, you're going to keep coming to him begging him for the same things that he said he's already paid for. So we don't want to base God, uh, or, or we don't want to approach God based on our own righteousness, do we? Now Trump says that he doesn't, that I, and he may have changed this because this was a couple years ago that I heard him say this. But he said that that he doesn't have any sin. Okay, and you may know somebody that says that. Okay, Barbara knew somebody who who literally said he has no sin. He does not sin. Okay, well that person is blind, deaf, and dumb. Okay, <laughs> and uh, and so you know that kind of person is bringing salad. Okay, and that and that salad's not going to cut it, and they are going to have to pay for their own sins. I don't think they're bringing salad. I think they're just not showing up. Yeah, amen, <laughs> amen. That's good. That's good. And so we have to. We cannot come before God in our own righteousness because we don't have any. You know what? And and to me, that was relief when I figured that out. Okay? Because I, I was always trying to get some. And I can't. I don't have any righteousness. All I have is his righteousness. And that that, that, that doesn't even express it correctly when I said all I have. All, all I have. But no, I have his righteousness. <laughs> Yay! And, uh, and so, um, so I am a daughter of the king. And that's what Hebrews uh, 4.15 tells us. And so we don't approach God based on our own righteousness, but based upon his righteousness and upon our positions as sons and daughters. So guess what? If we have a need, what do we do? We come as a daughter. We come as a son. And, and maybe you didn't have a great parent, but I did. I had the most wonderful father in the world, and, and I do, and I know people do this. They relay God with their er earthly father, okay? And if you had a bad one, then you tend to relate God to, to your earthly father, and, and it's just the way we are. But I do relate somewhat my dad with God because I knew, I knew, I bet my life on it, no matter what I had need of, he would be there for me. And, and, and that gave me a lot of comfort. You know, did, did, was I a great kid? Absolutely not. But I knew he would be there for me. I knew he would never turn me away. No matter how bad I got, I knew he would, he would never turn me away. And he never did. And, uh, and so this is just, just a funny thing. I have a tattoo. 
Okay, that's probably no big deal now, but it was a big deal in the Church of God, and it was a big deal to my mom and dad. I got it when I was 18 in the next, when, I, when I went through boot camp, because that's what everybody did. They went and got tattooed. Well, I came home from boot camp the first, the first time I came home, and I was trying to cover it up, and I didn't think my dad saw it, but he saw it. And all he said was, don't let your mother see that. You know, and, uh, and see, he did, he did. Now, do you think he was happy? Of course not. And there weren't that many people with tattoos back then, and just military pr people and prisoners. And uh, so I'm sure that he was not happy whatsoever. But you know what? He didn't beat me over the head. He didn't scold me. He didn't do anything. Now, I would have killed James Robbie. But anyway, that's the side of the point. That's the side of the point. Uh, but, uh, you know, but, you know, but my dad didn't do that. But, but he, he just lovingly said, don't let your mother see that. Because then I really would have gotten it. But anyway, but what I want you to see is Jesus bore the sin of the world. And Jesus bore God's wrath on the cross. He bore the wrath. God was angry at sin. God was angry at Satan. God was angry at the situation. And God bore that wrath of God on himself on the cross. So now we're in this new age of grace, the New Testament. Okay, which is an age of grace, a dispensation of grace, and we're no longer under God's wrath. And, and you know, people in China and Russia and places like that, see, they relate God to the way their government is. They think that God is an ogre, that God is mean, that God is after them, okay? And, and typically we don't think all, all that much like that here because, because of the freedoms that we've had. But, but what we have to understand is God is for us, and he's not against us, and he is not ready to club you over the head. That is so far from the truth. And But God's wrath will be poured out during the tribulation on the earth, because that is his wrath poured out. And, and, and that's a whole other story. But if we suffer now, and listen to me, if we suffer now, we are reaping what we've sown as unbelievers, but we can also reap as as believers. Okay? And and guess what? As believers, you can open a door to Satan and know he's not going to come in and possess you as a believer, but he can attach himself to you. Okay? And, and as a believer, you can open those doors and that spirit will come in and it'll attach itself to you. And then you can begin to follow that spirit instead of walking with the Holy Spirit. Okay? But now let me say this. If, you, if you're reaping what you've sown, okay, which we all do, but if you're reaping in your health, if you're reaping in your finances, you know, if you're reaping any other way, I want you to know that God is not mad at you. Jesus bore his wrath, bore your wrath, bore what you did to yourself on the cross. And he will, he will help you and revert and reverse whatever that you may have done to yourself. Okay? And uh, and and the thing is, we just have to decide today, okay, I, I'm no longer gonna follow whatever spirit I've let in. Okay, and I'm no longer gonna follow that. There's no room in me for that. The same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in me, and there is no room for anything but Jesus Christ and Him crucified and the Holy Spirit in me. Okay, so no more. So last night, I'm going to tell you what happened last night to us after we left here. And, and I tell you these things because I'm telling you that I need somebody to tell me how they overcame so that I can grow. So I'm going to tell you how I overcome so you can grow. Okay? So some of you may know, some of you don't, but we've been going through nine months of, uh, let's see, what would you call it? A faith walk with James. Okay? We're always going through something with James. James is our hard drama child. Okay? The drama never ends. So we've all been going through it as a family, all of us. And uh, and Jennifer's just been, she's been a stalwart in the faith for James, I'm telling you. Well, last night, Jennifer came to me and after church, and she told me, you know, what was going on and our latest meltdown, and James has given up and all this kind of stuff, and she was upset. So I got in the truck, and I told Jeff, and, and he wasn't here last night either. 
And so uh, we thought that he was at work and he did get off work at 7.30, so he really couldn't have got here. But he went somewhere he shouldn't have gone after church. He wasn't doing anything bad, but he just should have gone home. Anyway, so uh, so she told she texted me.